thank you for joining us in our study of God's holy and divine word uh, at Understanding the Father's Heart Ministries. I'm evangelist and teacher Joseph A. Brown. Our God loves you and he wants us to know his word. He wants us to have an idea of who he is. You know, Jesus Christ said, learn of me. And dearly beloved, we need to learn of him. We need to learn that, you know, we're living in a day and a time that is fast paced and that is passing us by quickly. And according to God's word, we need to prepare and ready ourselves for his coming. Dearly beloved, we don't know the hour. We don't know the time. But what we do know, according to God's word, and he gave that to us, that we know the season of his coming. And if you look around you and the things that have transpired just in the last past <clears throat> couple of months is enough for us to realize that our Lord God is in preparation of sending His Son into the earth. And so our subject is uh, the second coming of our Lord. And this is part two. But let us go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank You and we praise You. We glorify You. We magnify you for being the living God that you are. And Father, we ask that you open our eyes of understanding, Father, that we understand what is happening right now, Father God. So to the point, Father, that we ready ourselves, we prepare ourselves because we can see, Father God, what is happening around us. So Father, we just thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And praise God. Yes, dearly beloved. You know, <clears throat> there was a time, <clears throat> especially in these United States, when the gospel was being preached in a way that it put believers at attention. And I mean at attention, I mean simply the fact that we thought the Lord could come at any time. But I want you to know that there is no scripture that needs to be fulfilled. There's no prophetic prophecy that needs to be fulfilled uh, that would keep our Lord from coming the second time. And we need to be prepared and to be ready for that. And that's mainly what the scriptures is all about. You know, you hear so much about uh, God want to bless you. God want to give you this. And God wants to give you health and wealth and all of these things. And dearly beloved, as we said last week, that is nothing but false teaching. Do the Lord wants to bless you? Yes, that is not false. But Jesus Christ said these words, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be added unto us. So in other words, we are not called to seek after anything but his kingdom as a believer. But if you would hear it today and you would adhere to most of the teachings that you're getting today, it is that God wants to bless you. God wants to heal you. God wants to do all these things. And God simply said, yes, I want to do those things. But first, seek my kingdom and I will do those things. You see, when Jesus Christ walked in the earth, Jesus Christ was blessing the people. He was blessing whom? Those who were following him. Amen? Those who were following him, he was blessing them. Those who he came in contact with, he was blessing them. So, just as you and I today, we don't seek after the blessings, but we seek after the kingdom. And when we seek after the kingdom, then we get the blessings. Amen? So we got, the, we got it back. We got the cart before the horse in uh, this particular situation. But the Word of God says in Mark and, uh, and even in Luke and Matthew that there will be false prophets that will be coming to the earth, distracting us from the purity of the Word of God, and that is the love of God, and the fear of God is the beginning of all knowledge, all wisdom, and all understanding. 
If there's no fear of God, there can be no knowledge, there can be no wisdom, and surely there can be no understanding. So many times what we are getting is a lack of understanding. Yes, we under we have an idea of what is being said and what is being spoken, but it is directing us away from our anticipation and our waiting for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Even the disciples uh, on Jesus leaving, they believed that Jesus would return even in their lifetime. Dearly beloved, it has been nearly 2,000 years. Don't you believe that you and I should be more in tune in the Lord's coming than those disciples ever were? Amen? We ought to be more in tune with it, but yet the world is running rampantly in the way that it wants to go and not paying attention to what the Lord God is saying to us today. And we who are believers, amen? Amen? The Bible says that he will return and we have to be ready because God is coming for a people who are prepared, who are spotless and uh, without blame, according to God's word. And how is that done? That's done by confession. That's done by the fact that we are anticipating and waiting the coming of the Lord. And because we are doing that, we are readying ourselves and making our garments clean by confessing our sins unto the Heavenly Father who will forgive us and make us righteous. Glory be to God. And so that's what believers ought to be doing today, rather than trying to get all that they can get on this earth. Because there is a segment of people that believe because you have certain things in your life, you have nice houses, you have nice cars, and you have a great job and everything seems to be okay in your life. There are people like that who have not made the Lord Jesus Christ their Savior, who are not looking at that soon coming of the Lord Jesus Christ because they are contented with this place, they are contented where they are in this life because they look outside of themselves and they see others who are struggling and going through different things in their lives and they throw crumbs out to them and believe that somehow God will accept them in because of their good deeds and the monies of, that they have. But Jesus Christ told us, uh, his disciples one time when this widow that went in uh, and dropped in in the com collection plate, you might have it, uh, two mites. And the Lord Jesus Christ said to them, she had given more than all the rest. And yet the others had gave multitudes of finances, great numbers of of uh, monies. But yet Jesus Christ said this woman gave more because she gave all that she had. And dearly beloved, the Lord is looking for people who is willing to give everything that they have to prepare themselves for His coming. He's looking for a people who are watching his coming. They're on watch. They're readying themselves. This is the people that he's looking for. Not those who say, yes, I'm a Christian, but have no earthly idea that the Lord Jesus Christ could burst through the clouds right now and take them. The Lord is not taking anyone who is not ready and prepared to go. The Bible says that he comes in as a thief in the night or like a thief in the night. Only taking that which is precious to him. Only taking that which awaits him and his coming. So the question is, are you awaiting the second coming of our Lord? Are you so caught up in this life? And what you can get in this life. You're worried about your children. You're worried about your husband. You're worried about your job. You're worried about all these other things. But you're not concerning yourself with the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ whatsoever. Matter of fact, this may be the first message you've heard in quite a while. About our Lord's coming. Well, dearly beloved, He is going to return. The Word of God was not given to us to be a self-help manual. It was given to us so that we could prepare and ready ourselves for the coming of our Lord. Amen? Praise be to God. I want to look at a, because what I want to actually focus on this day 
is to talk about the atmosphere that will be around the the, the attitudes that will be in the earth when the, before the Lord's coming and that's why I said we need to prepare ourselves because the attitudes and the atmosphere is here already especially in the United States where our uh, where our Supreme Court have put down an edit an edit that says that it's okay for a man to marry a man and a woman to marry a woman in the eyes of the law they they're, they're, they're saying it is okay it's okay. It's nothing wrong with it. Well, dearly beloved, I want to say to you today, that is blasphemous in the eyes of God. Because God did not make man to marry man. And he did not make woman to marry woman. He made Adam and Eve. And the word of God says that he told them to go out and be fruitful and multiply. You tell me how two men together are going to be fruitful and multiply. How two women going to be fruitful and, and multiply. Dearly beloved, we're in a, a reckless state before God. And I want you to know, when you look at the Word of God, and you see what God did to Sodom and Gomorrah, and the Word of God says in Second Peter, that it was an example for you and I today who decide to live ungodly, or decide to live outside of God's will and God's purpose. And dearly beloved, we are living in that day and that time now, where they say that is okay. I want you to know the Roman Empire once believed that that was okay. And it was brought down to his knees. The Grecian Empire believed that very same thing. And they were brought to their knees. And dearly beloved, and so will God bring even these great United States to their knees because of what they are beginning to believe. And even from even uh, from as far as our White House, even the President agrees to this kind of blasphemous and demonic and deviant behavior because he said himself that uh, at first he didn't believe that but now he believes it he believes that it is okay to uh, transgender and uh, that should be a person's right to be able to do that well dearly beloved that's not the word of God. It's not all right. And if you would go for back as going to the old covenant, and then you would see what God said about that. God always brought destruction on a people, on a nation that decides that they're going to live outside of God's will and God's purpose. It doesn't matter what people say. They say, well, that's the way I feel. I, uh, God made a mistake when he made me a man. Or he made a mistake when he made me a woman. Well, according to God's word, first of all, he don't make no mistake. Maybe you were made for destruction. I really don't know. The Bible says that there are some uh, that are made just for destruction. So I don't have the slightest idea. But what I can say to you, according to God's word, that is not the proper way that you are to live your life and there will ultimately be a judgment according to God's word now look what the word of God says in first Timothy the full chapter beginning at the first verse now the spirit speak it expressly that in the latter times talking about the times that you and I are living today some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils because that is a doctrine of the devil himself. And the word of God said that there will be many that will depart from the faith. So that means that what? That they once believed. That they once had an understanding of what the faith really is. That they were walking in faith. That they were living in faith. And this is for those who go off saying to people, Oh, once you believe, you eternally secure that there is nothing that can go wrong in your life now, that God would never cast you away from him because you have believed. Well, look what the word of God says here, that some shall depart from the faith. They will depart from the faith. They will depart from the truth, the truth of God's word and take a lie to be the truth. And that's what happened. And when the Supreme Court said what they said they simply said that you know what we are departing from what we know to be the truth and now we're going to create our own truth and live in that truth and now even our nation 
is falling in step with this. Dearly beloved, I'm not saying that we can do anything to stop it because you know why? Let me tell you why. Because first of all, this is not our home. Amen? You know, those who are out there fighting on the forefront and say, well, we're going to do the righteousness of God and God's going to do this in the earth and we're going to destroy everybody who don't believe like we believe, that is not of God. And let me tell you why. Because this is not our home. Yes, this is a country that we are living in, the United States, but this is not our home. There is a home that Jesus Christ said, I go to prepare a place for you that you may be where I am and you can be there for eternity. That is our home. This is not our home. The, the children of Israel, the many years that they were in the desert, they were searching for a home. Many of them did not go into that new home or that place that were to become uh, Israel. Many of them did not go in. Why? Because of what? Unbelief. They had walked away from the faith. And many today is walking away from the faith because they are focused on what they can get today, what they can touch, and what they can feel. And dearly beloved, I say to you today in the name of Jesus Christ that you need to look up for your redemption is drawing nigh. None of us know when our time will be up. And you don't get a second chance once you go into the grave. Now, I know there are those who teach that, but that's false teaching. That's not true. You don't get a second chance. You don't get put in a holding tank where people can pray you out of that tank. No, dearly beloved, you go in the grave and you await the coming of the Lord. That's what happens. And you don't have a chance to repent. You don't have a chance to confess. You don't have a chance to turn away from the things that you are doing now. That opportunity has left you. You will not have that opportunity according to God's word. And the Bible says that in the last day, the Spirit of God expressly says there will be those that will depart from the faith. And they will be following uh, seducing spirits and doctrines of devils because those seducing spirits will be bringing in doctrines of devils and God and Satan will be using leaders who were trusted at one time and this is the damaging thing they could be trusted at one time but now they have been given uh, uh, doctrines of devil and now they are actually sharing that with the people and not getting the people ready for the coming of the Lord and the Word of God says that we must prepare ourselves and ready ourselves for the coming of the Lord. We are concerned about the things of today. We are concerned about the next game that's going to happen. We are concerned about the sport activities. We are concerned about who's going to be the next president. We are concerned about uh, what the economy is going to do. Dearly beloved, you may not be here for whatever the economy do. I may not be here for whatever the economy uh, will do. You know, just the other day, a friend of I, a friend of mine, and I was uh, actually uh, playing a, 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 a game of golf. We was actually on a golf course, and I won't say where we were. But you know, someone passed by and took a shot. We don't know if it was at us or just trying to scare us. We really don't know. But it was so close that we could actually smell. The, the, the potter uh, from the gun. That's how close it was. It was a drive-by. It passed by. That could have been my last day on earth. Could have been his last day on earth. Who knows? And that's what I'm saying to you, dearly beloved, today. I would not have a chance to repent unto the Lord if I'm dead. You won't have a chance to repent to the Lord once you die. It is over with. Your life has been lived, and that life will be judged according to God's holy and divine word. And as I said before, there is no place that you will go and people will be able to pray you out or pay you out. It don't happen, dearly beloved. It'll burn a candle and get you out. It do not happen. That is not in the Bible. That is made up by man. And that's one of the doctrines of the devil that the Bible speaks about. Something that takes you away from living your life right. Because there are those who say, well, I'm not worrying about it because my mama went to heaven. 
My dad is in heaven. And I know he's saying a good word for me. Dearly beloved, that's not the truth. That's a lie from the devil. There's no different than the, the lie I heard this preacher say one time. Uh, this woman came to him mourning because she had lost her son. I don't know if it was a drug deal that went bad, but she lost her son. And he, and, and he seeing her, uh, brought, him, him un, brought her unto himself and said, Ma'am, don't worry about anything. Everything is fine. I can see your son on the portals of heaven, the balcony of glory looking down on you right now, and he's smiling. And the woman nearly fell out in tears and rejoicing. Dearly beloved, she was being deceived. To believe that lie. The only one who gained something that day. Is probably the preacher man. Because she probably went then to her purse. When the collection plate passed. And gave an extra helping. Because of what he had told her. And dearly beloved. That's the type of deception. That is in the earth today. It's not a desire for men's souls. It's not a desire that men turn away from their ways and then begin to anticipate and wait upon the Lord. No, dearly beloved, it's not an alarm being sound. It's rather, let's try to live the best life that we can live right now on this earth. And they have made the word of God non-effect because they have made it into a big self help book dearly beloved the Lord never intended for his word to be a self help manual but he wanted it to be a word of warning and of example of how we should live our lives and especially for us today in the preparation of his coming. Dearly beloved, the word of God says <clears throat> there would be those in the second verse speaking lies in hypocrisy. In other words, they're speaking things that they're not even willing to live by and telling you to do that very same thing. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Their conscience have been burnt. You can't even Get them to speak the truth any longer. They don't know what the truth is any longer. You can speak to them about the truth and tell them you need to turn away from your wicked ways because this is not of God and they will not be able to do it because their minds have been seared with a hot iron according to God's holy word. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which God had created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing is to be refused if it, it to be received with thanksgiving. So there's coming a day and a time even where they will say to you, you can't eat this and you can't eat that. And But the Lord saying uh, that is uh, fictitious and that is not true. But if you bless it and you know the truth, then you can walk in the truth and God truly will bless it. But there will be those who will be denying that truth, dearly beloved. So there will be a great falling away. And we're living in that time today. <clears throat> you can't fall away from something unless you were a part of something. Say that again. You cannot fall away from something unless you have already been a part of something. So those who say to you, don't worry about it, you believed and you trust the Lord, and you you don't have to worry about anything at all. It's like that preacher told me one time. I said, after, you know, I said, you know, I've come to know the Lord. And the Lord is my Savior, and I have no doubt about it. I, I know that He's my God. I've become a child of the Living God. There's not a doubt. And I said to him, but since he was preaching this thing about eternal security, I said, uh, but what if I decide I want to go kill some people because I'm angry, and I go kill them? Will the Lord still accept me that way? He said, oh, sure, sure, the Lord will accept you. It doesn't matter what you do after you get saved, as long as you get saved. Dearly beloved, 
that is a lie from hell. Now, there are many believers who believe that. They'll live and die by that very creed. And let me say to you, that are that. There are those who do that and they say that, but yet, at the same time, they're not awaiting the coming of the Lord. It's like the, uh, uh, the young fellow, the, a couple of guys, uh, when uh, the preacher David Wilkerson was preaching the word of God on the streets of New York City. And he was preaching the word with power and authority. And uh, these young men passed by him and they said, oh man, you ought to cut all that noise out. And, 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 and you know, and he asked them if they were saved. And they said, oh, man, we've been saved. We've come to know the Lord. We, we know who, who he is. And, and, and they said, uh, you know, once you believe, you, you believe. I can do what I want to do. And, and, and David Wilkinson said, that it, basically, that is not the true gospel. What you have heard was a lie. But they went on their merry way, believing that. They could do what they want to do now because what? They confess with their mouths and they say they believe in their heart and now they're saved. And I remember when we used to go out on the street doing that. And and I used to uh, 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 be with this evangelistic team and, and you know, and we sat down and we talked about it and then I told them that I could not go out any longer if we were going to go out that way giving the people so-called the Roman road to salvation and somehow believe that once we leave them there, they confess with their mouth and so-called believe in their heart that they were saved. Then, beloved, I believe that we left hundreds, hundreds ignorant of God's true word by simply doing that. And I, and I confess of that and I repent of that, of doing that. And I pray that if you're walking with that kind of understanding and you think there's nothing that you have to do but only believe and then go off and do every, anything you want to do, then dearly beloved, I can say to you, you need to come to the Lord Jesus Christ even right now and begin to confess those sins unto the Lord. Because dearly beloved, it is no doubt in my mind that if you're walking in that state, you're walking outside the will and the purposes of God. And God is calling you back today calling you back today because he loves you and he is very concerned about you and the salvation of your soul dearly beloved our lord bless you and our god keep you is our prayer and we want to continue on that line of study our lord's second coming because dearly beloved he is going to return and there will be many that will miss out because they decided to live their life on their own accord. Let that not be you. God bless you in Jesus' name.